Hello students, welcome to TSAT classes. Welcome to the classes on Indian polity and constitution for TSPSC group 1 mains. I am Satish Kumar Pendyala. Friends, as discussed in the previous class, we have just started the chapter 1 of paper 3 in Indian polity topic of TSPSC group 1 mains. To continue with the chapter 3, let us see some more expected mains questions related to that particular topic. Yes. So, this is the chapter we have started in our last class. So, this chapter consists of few things that is your evolution of the constitution, your role of the drafting committee, constitutional philosophy, preamble, salient features and basic structure as well as the amendments. Friends, in the last class if you have remembered, we have discussed the few expected important questions related to that, this topic, point number 1, 2, what is the model answer and how to write an answer for each type of the topic which we have discussed. Today, I will show you few more mains expected questions related to this particular topic. Let us see the first question. Question number 1. Right. If you look at question number 1, this is actually very very expected and important for the exam. This is a concept related question of Indian polity. Look at the question. India is a federation with strong center. India is a federation with strong center. Justify the statement with certain constitutional provisions. See, yesterday or in the last class, I said that we need to underline or round up the keywords, the keywords of the question, the keywords of the question. In this particular question, the keywords are federation, strong center and constitutional provisions. You need to justify this statement that is what is India, uh, why is Indian federation very strong, having strong center with constitutional provisions. You need to justify the statement. Now, let us see how to take up the answer for this particular question. As part of the introduction friends, as part of the introduction, as part of the introduction, you need to define what is federation. You need to define what is federation. As part of the introduction to this answer, you need to define the term federation. Now what is federation? Federation is nothing but the division of powers between center and states. In India, India is a federal country. Of course, India is also a unitary country. India is a mixture of both federation as well as unitary features. India is not an absolute federation. India is not a pure form of federation. It is a diluted form of federation. What is the meaning of federation? division of powers between center and states. The states in federation are not subordinates to the center. In a federal country, generally there is an independent judiciary. In a federal country, generally there is a supremacy of the constitution. In a federation, generally there is a rigid constitution. In a federal country, there is a dual constitution, there is a dual citizenship which we do not have, but all other features we have in Indian Federation. Of course, our Indian Federation is not purest because it is having the mixture of both federal and unitary features. Now, what is the meaning of unitary? Concentration of the powers is called unitary. Concentration of the powers is called unitary. The states in the unitary system 
or subordinate to the center. In unitary, we have a single constitution and a single citizenship which we have in the country. In a unitary nation, there is a generally integrated judiciary. Generally, there is an unwritten constitution and there is a supremacy of legislative laws. So that is your unitary. Because in India, there are both federal and unitary features. Indian system is called quasi-federal. Indian system is called quasi-federal as said by K.C. Ware. K.C. Ware, K.C. Ware said that Indian system is a quasi-federal or quasi-federal because it is a mixture of both federal as well as unitary features. But our question is not about what are the features of federation and unitary. Our question is linked to even though in India there is a federation, center is stronger. What are the reasons which makes center stronger? Even though in India, even though in India there is a division of powers, even though in India there is a division of powers, center is considered stronger. Center is considered stronger. What are the reasons which makes center stronger? What are the reasons which makes center or union stronger is the points you need to discuss in the subject. In the subject, in the introduction, you need to define what is federation. In the subject, in the matter, in the body, you need to discuss about what are the reasons which makes the center stronger in the federation. Now, let us pen down the reasons which make the center more stronger in the federation along with the constitutional provisions along with the supporting articles in the constitution. Let us see what are the reasons which makes the union stronger. Reason number one. In India, residuary powers. In India, residuary powers are with union. That is, according to article, according to article 248 of the constitution, residuary powers are given to the parliament. Residuary powers are given to the parliament, which makes the center stronger. Reason number two, right? In India, see, who is the head of the state? The head of the state is governor. But who appoints the governor? The governor, the governor of state, the governor of the state is appointed by, is appointed by President of India according to Article 155. According to Article 155 of the Constitution, it is the President of India who appoints the governor, which makes the center stronger. Now, suppose if you wish to amend the constitution, who can start the process of the amendment of the constitution? It is the parliament only. Parliament, the union, parliament has the authority to initiate the process of amending the constitution according to article 368 article 368 talks about the parliament procedure or power or authority to amend the constitution of india reason number four right reason number four suppose if you want to create or uh, merge or change the boundaries of the states in india who has the authority to form the new states in India? Parliament. The union has the authority to form, to form new states in India, to form new states in India according to Article 
3 of the constitution according to article 3 of the constitution it is the parliament which has the authority to form the new states in india right point number 5 point number 5 now this is important suppose if you want to admit any new state which is not at all part of india now who has the authority to admit the new state which is not part of india parliament parliament has the authority to admit any new state to admit any new state which is not part of india which is not part of india according to article 2 of the constitution article 2 of the constitution says it is a union which has the authority to admit a new state which is not part of the indian union before parliament may by law can admit or establish any new state which is not part of the indian union before point number 6 right now all state legislatures are not bicameral all state legislatures are not bicameral right only six states in india are bicameral there are only six states which are bicameral you know what to have the state legislative council to have the state legislative council to have the state legislative council right parliament by law parliament by law can can create or abolish a state legislative council article 169 of the constitution talks about this parliament may by law can create or abolish any state legislative council as per article 169 so this makes parliament more powerful in the federation this makes the union more powerful in the federation point number 7 now this is important again now for example we have a law made by the parliament a law made by parliament a law made by parliament is supreme is supreme then compared to a law made by the state legislature suppose a parliament law is applicable for the entire country but the state legislature law is not applicable for the entire country it is applicable for that particular state only according to which article right according to article 245 of the constitution parliament law is talks about territorial jurisdiction the territorial extent of the law the territorial jurisdiction of the law the limits of the law made by the parliament is more right point number 8 right if you look at schedule 7 schedule 7 the union list as more subjects the union list as more subjects compared to the other subjects as per article 246 of the constitution so as per article 246 of the constitution friends these are the reasons which makes the union more stronger even though there is a federation in india even though there is a division of powers the union is more stronger because of these reasons these are the points you need to mention in your 10 marker question within 12 minutes of your time so if you have the content ready 12 minutes is not a matter without the content it is very difficult to finish writing an answer within 12 minutes so i request you to first concentrate on gaining more content gaining more knowledge and practice writing the answers so now this is the question where you need to write the definition of the federation in the introduction then you need to write reasons constant reasons which are mentioned within the constitution of india right uh where why the union is more stronger in the federation then in the conclusion then in the conclusion in the conclusion you need to say that right 
to uh, India, India follows asymmetric federalism, asymmetric federalism, right, to ensure, to bring the integration, to bring the integration for the country, to ensure there is an integrated India union play a elder brotherly role and ensure that union is supreme, union is more powerful even though we have a federation. So, this is the answer you need to focus right for this particular question. Let us go to another question, look okay, at the another question, right. There is a difference between American Federation and Indian Federation. Critically analyze the statement. See, the word critically analyze is given. There is a difference between American Federation and Indian Federation. Critically analyze the statement. Now, you have to critically analyze the statement. Now, what is Indian Federation? What is the difference between Indian Federation and American Federation or US Federation? US Federation. Now, what you need to write in the introduction, the same thing in the introduction, in the introduction, you need to define the term federation. In a general way, you need to define the term federation. What is the meaning of federation? Federation is nothing but the division of powers between center and states is called federation. You need to divide the powers between center and states and that is called federation. Now, coming to the subject, what you need to write in the subject? You need to start writing the answer for this by quoting article 1 of the constitution. What is article 1 of the constitution? It says, India, that is Bharat, India, that is Bharat, shall be, shall be union of states. India, that is Bharat, shall be union of states. If you look at American constitution, it is called Federation of States. It is called Federation of States. So, you are supposed to write the answers between answer explaining the difference between what is Union of State and what is Federation of State. Even though in India we follow the federal features, even though India has Federation. India is a federation, the constitution, the constitution did not mention the term federation in the entire constitution. The term federation is nowhere mentioned in the constitution, nowhere mentioned in the constitution. Then why the term federation is not mentioned? Let us critically analyze this statement, let us critically analyze this statement. In USA, it is called Federation of States. In India, it is called Union of States. You know why? There are two reasons why it is called Union of States in India and Federation of States in USA. What are these two reasons? Reason number one. In India, I am talking about India. This is India, okay? This is India. This is US, okay? India. This is USA. In India, the union create states. In India, the union create states. In federation, in federation or in USA, in USA, in USA, the states created union. See, 
in US constitution, according to US constitution, 50 states came together, 50 states came together and formed the union. All 50 states came together by an agreement. 50 states came together by an agreement. 50 states came together by an agreement to form union. But in India, states did not form the union. In fact, according to article 2 and 3, according to article 2 and 3, the union has the authority to create the states. Like it has created the state of Telangana on June 2nd, 2014. This is the first reason why in India federation word is not used. Second one, in India, in India, the states cannot come out of the union. In India, the states cannot come out of the union. It is very difficult for the states to come out of the union. The states cannot go out of the country. States in India cannot go out of the country. But look at the USA. Because it is formed by an agreement, because there is an agreement, because there is an agreement, states can come out of the union. For example, out of 50 states, imagine Texas. Texas says, I don't want to be with the USA. I will come out of the agreement. I will come out of the agreement and I will form the new country. But in India, it is not the same case. In India, states cannot come out of the union. No state has the authority to come out of the country. So, the reason only constitutional makers did not use the word federation of states. Hats off to them. Thankful to them. So, the reason the word federation is not used because it can be misunderstood in the future. Because there are many states in India which want to have a separate country. If we write federation of states, it is like we giving chance for them to go out of the country. It is not that easy. So, this is a difference between union of states and federation of the states. So, this, this is the subject you need to write. Now, what you will write in the conclusion? The conclusion is, right? So, the reason the constitutional makers ensure to bring the integration, to bring the integration, to bring the integration among all the states, the word federation was not used within the constitution. See, now you have knowledge over this particular uh, question. So, in 12 minutes, it is very easy for you to pen down 150 to 180 words. Gain more content, gain more knowledge that ensures that you score more in the exam. Now, let us go to the next question. Discuss, see the word discuss, the evolution of the basic structure doctrine. Discuss the evolution of the basic structure doctrine, see with the help of judicial judgments. Discuss the evolution of the basic structure doctrine with the help of the judicial documents. Now, introduction. Now, what you need to write in introduction? Basic structure do doctrine is propounded by the Supreme Court in Keshavananda Bharati case, which contains the provisions or like the basic elements or the basic features within the constitution. Those elements which are part of the basic structure doctrine are immune to judicial review. They do not come under judicial review. They cannot be challenged in the judiciary. Now, let me repeat this in a different way. Basic structure doctrine is profounded by 
सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन केशवानंद भारती केस इन केशवानंद भारती केस ऑफ 1973 वेयर दिस बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर डॉक्ट्रीन कंटेन्स द बेसिक फीचर्स बेसिक फीचर्स ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बेसिक फीचर्स ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वेयर दे आर और दे कैनॉट बी वेयर दे कैनॉट बी अमेंडेड वेयर दे कैनॉट बी अमेंडेड बाई द लेजिस्लेचर लेजिस्लेचर डू नॉट हैव द अथॉरिटी टू अमेंड द बेसिक फीचर्स ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन विच आर पार्ट ऑफ द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर डॉक्ट्रीन नो how this basic structure doctrine evolved how this basic structure doctrine evolved see basic structure doctrine evolved by certain judicial judgments the first judicial judgment we need to focus is shankari prasad shankari prasad case of 1951 in shankari prasad case supreme court said legislature has the complete authority to amend any part of the constitution including fundamental rights that amendment can be made by constitutional law only constitution amendment act only constitution amendment act only i am repeating this in shankari prasad case supreme court said parliament has the complete authority to amend the entire constitution but by using constitutional amendment act only mentioned in article 368 of the constitution next in sajjan singh case in sajjan singh case supreme court said supreme court said parliament has the authority to amend the entire constitution both by an ordinary law or by constitution amendment act in this both cases legislature is given more priority constitution amendment by the legislature was made very easy first shankari prasad case said constitution can be amended only by constitution amendment act but in sajjan singh case supreme court said it can be done by ordinary law or constitution amendment act there is no problem in the next case called golaknath case golaknath case of 1967 supreme court said supreme court said parliament can amend the entire constitution except fundamental rights parliament cannot amend the fundamental rights parliament do not have the authority to amend the fundamental rights because article 368 only talks about the procedure not authority to the parliament in shankari prasad case supreme court said parliament can amend the fundamental rights and the entire constitution but following the constitution amendment act only in sajjan singh case supreme court said parliament can amend the entire constitution including fundamental rights but by an ordinary law or constitution amendment act anything is fine but in golaknath case parliament can amend the entire constitution but except the fundamental rights it cannot amend the fundamental rights no way it can amend the fundamental rights because fundamental rights are basic rights of the human being fundamental rights are the basic rights of the people so you cannot amend the fundamental rights other things if you want you can amend this was again challenged in keshava nand bharati case in keshava nand bharati case supreme court said in keshavan and the bharti ke supreme court said point number 1 parliament as the authority parliament as the authority to amend to amend 
any part in the constitution any part in the constitution including fundamental rights but but parliament cannot amend but parliament cannot amend the basic features of the constitution the basic features of the constitution except the basic features of the constitution parliament can amend any part of the constitution this basic features of the constitution combinedly are called doctrine of basic structure doctrine of basic structure so anything within the doctrine of basic structure cannot be amended by the parliament so this is the evolution of the basic structure doctrine keshavananda bharatike supreme court did not define what is basic structure as we see more number of cases supreme court has added many elements of the constitution within the basic structure doctrine few examples like independent judiciary judicial review secularism democracy article 14 article 21 all these are article 32 all these are part of basic structure doctrine so this is your chapter 1 of paper 3 of indian polity in the next class i will discuss chapter 2 of paper 3 of indian polity till then happy learning Jai Hind